Well, it is the month of October, which means pumpkins are a plenty. Pumpkin spice everything can be found pretty much everywhere you go. But did you know that if you want to make pumpkin pie or pumpkin cheesecake and your recipe says to open up a can of pumpkin, well, there is a better way that you can do it and we're gonna share with you what you need to do. After today, Mark and Andy are gonna be so experienced as far as preparing pie pumpkins that I'm sure they're gonna go home and wanna make pumpkin pies all the so time. So there's a difference no. between a regular pumpkin and a pie pumpkin. Well, I don't know what you would call a regular pumpkin. Like maybe this is a regular pumpkin to you. You just cut my beautiful blue cheese pumpkin that I was gonna wait and keep for a while. I wanna see what color it is inside. I guess that I won't inside? be using this one as decoration. Just turn it. Um, Towards see, the wall. It is orange inside. It is orange inside. This is a blue cheese pumpkin, and this is an edible pumpkin. Here's a little tiny pumpkin. Yes, there's all kinds of different pumpkins. The kind that you carve are different than the kind that you use for your pumpkin pies. Those are called pie pumpkins. All right. Okay. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> so we're going to today show you how simple it is. It does take a little work, but the quality that you get in the end is a higher quality pumpkin product and um, it's just always good. Plus the satisfaction of doing it yourself instead of exactly. a store-bought pumpkin. There well, might, you go. Might or might not be overdue. <laughs> Let's get started here so we can take a look. The very first thing you have to do before you guys don't even start yet cut is you simply have to cut the pumpkin. However, as I did some internet research on the proper way to prepare a pumpkin, a pie pumpkin for pumpkin pie or other things is I learned that you can just outright cut it, which is what you're gonna do, Oh. Or you can bake it for 45 minutes, oh. which is supposed to soften it and make it easier to cut, which Mark is going to mm -hmm. test that one out. Oh. So we're going to check and see. So the first thing, guys, you need to do is you're just going to cut this thing in half. Like this way? Cut it in half. I would recommend you actually, actually like, stab this that. This way. So that you can... It's not really the halfway point. And that was quite easy to slice in half. Oh. Well, look at that. Mark is winning so far. It smells good baked. <laughs> Andy is not getting too far. Now, I have always done this the Andy style, and it's worked for me. You just simply have to cut it in half. Baking is much easier. Yeah, this, I'm worried Now, about obviously, that. that does take more of a prep time. You bake that for about, what, half an hour, right? Yeah, uh, at 400 degrees, and you know, it was really simple. Just threw the pumpkin in the oven. You're Didn't rubbing it in. Didn't have to do anything basic. Hey, I believe in you, Andy. I, I know you can do this. Just think That's how accomplished stem. you'll it's feel. in the way. So, we'll there. let Mark start on the next step while Andy... Oh, I think Andy's almost there. But I have the stem now. What do I do with that? I'll just break it. Okay, so the very next step that is necessary is to pull out the pumpkin seeds and the strands. Now, I have found that a pasta server like this works out pretty well. So, one of you guys can use this if you want to. Um, don't forget that these pumpkin seeds can be saved and used for other things. We did you that can two years roast ago, right? them, yeah. You can roast them. Um, you can also put your pumpkin seeds and the strands in a bowl and put them in the refrigerator. If you don't have time to roast them now, you just have to use them within a couple of days. So Andy's using the hand method. Is that a bad Mark method? is using the spoon method. No, I seeds? think it's whatever works. Whatever works. You know, God created pumpkins before he created spoons. I'm not sure how they the would have, I'm not sure how they would have <laughs> cut them open, but you know, that's the case. <laughs> so how clean does it need to be exactly? Well, I, uh, that, you're doing a very good job. I'm not done. That's good. Then. So are you finding this to be pretty easy to spoon it out since Absolutely. it's already mm -hmm. been somewhat yes. um, The fact that it's pre baked makes this much easier. Much easier, yeah. Now whether And it's nice and toasty in my hands. Ah. It's a hand warmer. <laughs> Take that on a cold Friday night to the right. football game. You're going to be needing that. It's been nice in October, <laughs> but um, we live in Ohio. It could be cold in a matter of two hours. So once the guys are all finished cleaning the pumpkins out, then comes the next point, which really will take uh, more time. That's when you actually start baking it so that you can get the pumpkin flesh. Mm. Guys, can you see the flesh? You see where Is the that actual that part? Yeah, the That's right. meat of the pie. Now in an actual, like if you're getting a jack-o'-lantern big one and you're wondering if you could do this with one of those big, big pumpkins, yes, you can. The only thing is you're gonna have a much thinner layer mm. of flesh, so you're not gonna have as much meaty yeah, stuff in there that you have with the pie pumpkins. All right, so whether you have pre-baked your pumpkin, 
like Mark did, or whether you have not pre-baked your pumpkin, the next step does require baking it for a pretty long period of time. And it's up to you how long you want to bake it. Set your, set your oven to at least 350 degrees, well, 325 to 350. And now you're going to kind of slow cook it for at least two hours. It could even go longer than that. It will just intensify the flavor over time. I'm happy with my pumpkin. You're happy. You're not. <laughs> oh, no, I think you've done great. You've done, in fact, both of, it, both of these look great. So the next step would be to put it on a plate, Voila. which I'm going to trade you. Okay. I'm going to hand this to you guys. I did pre-bake a pumpkin last night, so we can move on to the next step. Sorry about that. If you drop an unbaked pumpkin, you're more likely to break a toe than if you drop the one that was softly baked. And it's less messy. <laughs> it's less messy. <laughs> There's a pumpkin. That's on, on your my, foot. On Are you okay? Foot at this very Is that moment. your broken foot? <laughs> <laughs> so let's pretend we just put those in the oven and they are going to bake now for quite a while. It's going to start smelling wonderful in your kitchen. And here's the deal then. After you are finished with the baking, the next thing you have to do is you have to clean out the flesh. So if you clean out the flesh and go ahead and put it in the bowl. That's freshly baked. That is. Do I use that a is. spoon? Sure. And that's all good in there, all that flesh. That is. That is very similar to what you're going to have in, in here. Now, a secret I learned many years ago, if you can't get enough flesh out of a pie pumpkin, mm -hmm. you can actually use a butternut squash, and you'll have a lot yeah. of the same results. And butternut squash has tons more. As you can see here, the guys, again, are using multiple ways to do this. It, and it just becomes easier correct. to skin it this way. <laughs> They're all correct. Isn't that wonderful? There's, there's no wrong way. Everybody well, there probably gets is a, a ribbon wrong way. for our pumpkin cutting. You are all winners. Participation medals. <laughs> Makes me want to eat the skin, but I don't think I'd enjoy that. It's like a potato. Yeah. Or a banana skin. I think I'd eat a potato skin before a banana skin. <laughs> we'll save that for another day. What skin <laughs> would you be willing to eat on television? The mystery skin. <laughs> All right, so here we have the final thing you have to do is you need to somehow get this um, so that it's, it's just it's easier to work with because we still have some pretty solid pieces here. Now, you can just mash it up if you don't have your own uh, food processor. And you can take a spoon or you can do whatever. I have cooked with pumpkin in this, in this capacity. But the final step that's recommended by everything online, and everything online is always right, correct? <laughs> <laughs> is to put it in a fruit processor of some sort. I'm using a Ninja. <coughs> Excuse me. Are you ready? Just press the button. Which button? The top one. I don't know, is it working? Yeah. It's working? It's working. Now, to be honest, Andy, I probably could have baked this one a little bit longer. Oh. I only Set baked it. For failure, I only Jennifer. baked it for about an hour and a half. So you might want to do it longer, and then your your pumpkin flesh will be softer. But there you have it. You've got pumpkin ready to be used in a recipe, or ready to be frozen. You can put it in the refrigerator for several days, or you can freeze it for up to several months, and then you can have pumpkin pie all year long. Can you add sugar? And I'm a big proponent of having pumpkin pie all year long. I don't understand why it's only a seasonal thing. Should be, you should have pumpkin pie on a hot June day just as quickly as you have it on a crisp autumn evening. Well, there you've got it. Get every pie pumpkin you can find, bake it in the oven, get it all ready, put it in the freezer, and then this summer we'll bring out the pumpkin pie. <laughs>